What is going on, everybody? Boylon here, back for another video on Marvel Strike Force. This is take two for the old Man Logan Trials event because I tried to record this one time. I accidentally released it yesterday, and apparently for like 80% of the video, I didn't have sound, so I'm hoping it works this time, and we're going to re-record this again. So we're going to be talking about the trials and the nodes, which have been made uh, clear to us a little bit in advance thanks to the data mines. Also going to go over all of the best characters that you should be using and considering and why on this. We're also going to take a look at an overview just to remind you guys as to what to expect, uh, especially the free to play versions versus the five plus star versions, depending on, you know, what characters you have at five plus yellows, which is going to be cabal and out of time. So if you're ready to go, everybody, let's boil this down. Now, let's start here. So this is the chart for the Old Man Logan event. I think I might make a zoom in one more time here. So if you want to unlock a four yellow, and I think it's about two red, honestly, I think that's where the free to play kind of caps out at, then you're going to be wanting to do difficulty eight with zero packs. Now, for those of us who do not have five star on our cabal and out of time, we can go all the way up to difficulty 10. Now, we've been told that the difficulties are about minus two from what Green Goblin is, apparently. So a D10 might look like a D8 Green Goblin trial, but I mean, that's what they say anyways. And these are the nodes here. So it's no restriction on node one, out of time on node two, cosmic bio, hero skill, villain, cabal, repeats those other three. And then finally, at the very end of level 10 or node number 10, you can use either out of time or Cabal and Emma Loki. So we'll take a look at the nodes individually in each section, just to kind of go over the characters that you're going to be facing. Uh, but I do want to say that if you do have five star, you can go all the way up to D12. If you have six star, you can go all the way up to D14. And if you have seven star, you can get to D15. Now, you're only going to be able to get a four yellow or a five yellow Logan. Five yellow Logan, I believe, comes from difficulty 11 and clearing that. Um, unfortunately though, six and seven yellow Logan stems only from the leaderboard. So what that means is that no matter, you know, there's only going to be so many people that are going to get these. How many? I don't know. Cause I haven't seen what the leaderboard looks like, but at least know that there's only going to be so many people that are going to get those star levels of Logan. And I don't think that his red stars are going to be in the dark promotion store. So I think you also get that through this event through the leaderboard. So a lot of it just hinges on the leaderboard. But if you're kind of like me, you're going to be stuck at D10. But if you do want to just bear unlock him, then you're going to want to run D8. So it's highly possible that scoring on D10, you know, despite it not being the five star, there could be a lot of people that are going to be running this. But you're going to see a lot of people probably with ties, because if you do D10 with the max packs and all of that, I suspect that there's going to be a lot of tiebreakers. Now, I tried to get some clarification on how the leaderboard is going to work specifically with regards to ties, the way I think it works is honestly the first people, the first person to achieve that score, which basically means that you want to get on ASAP on Friday to run this at D10, if that's what your cap is, and then uh, do that. Because if you're the first person, you're going to do it. You're going to get a higher score on the leaderboard than someone who started after you, which is kind of shit, but that's just how it is. So let's get on to the nodes itself. I want to talk about these. Let's go back so you can see my face. So let's talk about first. We're going to start with node number one, and then I've kind of lumped them together depending on the groups and categories of the nodes. So no restriction we have here, node number one. Honestly, you can probably use basically anything that you can't use in the other one. So I think Extreme X-Man is up for grabs. Um, there's a lot of real solid teams that you can use in, the, in this instead. That's probably what I would go for honestly, but you could also use uh, not Apocalypse because you can actually use them in the villain section. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't tend to like to overlap too many characters in different nodes because I want to I don't want to, you know, get them hurt or use their ability energies ahead of their nodes. I would use something like Extreme X-Men personally. I think they're, they're going to be more than capable of doing this. You can see uh, this is a combination of Pegasus and Shield. So you have Darkhawk, uh, Shield Security and Medic, Kestrel, Shield Operative Rescue, and I believe another Darkhawk, so two Darkhawks. Rescue Kestrel. Wave number two, we have a Maria Hill Mockingbird. Maria Hill again. Iron Man Infinity War, Nick Fury Mockingbird, and two Iron Hearts. So more Pegasus, more Shield. In this case, we have Mockingbird from New Avengers, but 
also has the shield tag. And then in wave number three, we have another Nick Fury, another Kestrel, Black Widow, shield operative and medic, rescue, Iron Man, Infinity War, and Maria Hill. Lots of characters actually on this first node. So it could be a little bit more challenging, but I think that honestly with Extreme X-Men, they probably have what it takes to do this. Doesn't seem overly that bad. You could also use Eternals, I think, in this as well, because S.H.I.E.L.D. tends to have a lot of, and same with Pegasus, have a lot of uh, abilities that are a lot of buffs that you can flip. Don't think it'll be that big of a problem. You could do like a, a hybrid, maybe like a um, Masters of Evil. But you could also use Masters of Evil in the villain section. So I'm trying to think of characters that y y I'm sure you have something for a non -risk. I'm not going to even tell you what to use. You should be able to do this yourself. Um, and then finally, we have, or sorry, not finally, next up. <laughs> We have Out of Time and then the Cabal Loki stuff. Node number two, which is quite interesting. I've highlighted some of the big, big characters that you're going to see on this one. So node number two is two Super Scrolls, both in wave one and in wave three. I think that's quite interesting. And then we have a Morgan Le Fay who's going to have some pretty beefy uh, resistances there. Then we have like some symbiote characters or hive mind characters. We've got Scream, Venom, and Gwenom. We've got the Wong and Morgan Le Fay combo. So potentially being stuck behind a taunt. I could see that. And then wave number two, we have Emma Fra some Marauders, basically. Two Madelines, Agent Venom again for Symbiotes, Strife, and Emma Frost. And then wave number three, Anti Venom, uh, two Anti Venoms actually in fact, and another Super Scroll. Now, I think as long as you maintain your charges, like Super Scroll sh should just kill himself. That's what I would think. That's typically what happens when it comes to Super Scroll versus Black Knight. There's also going to be War and Crucible buffs active. And I do want to let people know about that, that there is packs for War active and Crucible active abilities. So most likely you're running both, right? Because Cabal has the Crucible bonuses and Out of Time has the War bonuses. So when it comes to going up against these characters, you're going to want to think of the enemies. Do they have War buffs active? Do they have Crucible buffs active? In this case for node number two, the Marauders might have some. I don't think it's going to be that bad, though. Uh, but otherwise, the rest of the characters do not really have war or crucible buffs. So out of time should have no problems, in my opinion, taking out super scrolls. So that part shouldn't be that bad. We'll take a look at node number 10, though, when we get there. Now we're going to jump ahead a bit here to node number six, because this is the cabal node. So we have cabal, Emma and Loki. And this contains a lot of spider society characters and uh, as guardian characters slash Bifrost. So we have Peter B. Parker, Beta Ray Bill, Penny Parker. Beta Ray Bill again, Sylvie and Ball, and then Wave 2, Pavitra, Ghost Spider, Noir as part of Spider Society, Thor, Ball, Spider Weaver, and Mighty Thor. So my first impression here is you're going to want to get rid of Peter B because he's a support character. Honestly, this is what I do when I go up against them in Cosmic Crucible. Uh, they are not going to, there's going to be some war buffs actually from Hero as Guardians, but I think that's largely coming from Mighty Thor and maybe Thor. But Bifrost is a raid team, so they don't really get those kind of bonuses, I don't believe, and that should be fine. So I don't think this is going to be that difficult either, because you're going to have Cabal with Crucible boss, and they're just going to blow this out of the park. But I would focus on making sure that Peter B dies, and then of course when Vol drops in Wave 3, that's like an ASAP kind of thing. Um, possible oh, Vol in Wave 1, sorry, as well. So bo both, you don't want Vols up. <laughs> you don't want potentially Vol reviving any of the Asgardian characters with the alt. I think that would be... Uh, spelling for disaster. Now, finally, the last of these kind of sets of characters is node number 10. This is where you can use Out of Time or Cabal. And I think you probably want to use Out of Time first and then clean up with Cabal. That's what I would probably suggest. And so wave number, well, there's four waves in this one. You get Mr. Sinister, Black Cat, Morbius, Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider Robbie, and another Morbius. This is like Bleed Central. Uh, this is going to be a lot of bleeds. And also Mr. Sinister very likely is going to attempt to clone Black Knight because he's going to spawn with Taunt unless there's some other way. Like, I don't know what the turn order is. I don't think Mr. Sinister is that fast. So it's possible, maybe, that uh, Captain America might be able to taunt or something, which then triggers a clone on him instead of Black Knight uh, because there's going to be war buffs and stuff. So I don't know, actually, how the turn order goes on this one. And then this is where it's going to get a little bit troublesome because of those war buffs. We have Nova here on Wave 2, Zombie Iron Man, and Zombie Juggernaut. That's going to be a bit rough, I think. And then we have Wave 3, Green Goblin Classic, uh, Ghost Rider Robbie, Mordo, and Elsa Bloodstone. So that one's not too bad. There's going to be a lot of bleeds, though. And the bleeds are going to synergize with Zombie Iron Man. Because of his passive, basically, if people have bleeds up on their team, um, they're going to hit each other as part of the passive from Zim. So you need to be careful about that and make sure you have like an immunity 
uh, which you can get from uh, Captain Carter, I believe, and definitely from Captain America's special taunt. So that cleanses and puts up immunity, I'm almost certain. And then wave number four. I don't know why it says seven, uh, but it's actually Mephisto. <laughs> I don't know why it said seven. So this is quite interesting. And this is where I think that out of time is probably going to die. And you're going to have to bring in your Cabal for a cleanup if you make it that far. Uh, because Mephisto is going to spawn and he's going to do, if you don't know what his kit does, just know that he basically spawns in, takes a turn immediately, and he's going to put exhaust on the entire team, which means that no longer Black, Black Knight won't be able to retaliate anymore. And I think this is where things might just start to fall apart. And that's why I think after that point, that's where you're going to have to bring in Cabal and basically do the same thing. Uh, so you should build the cleanup with Cabal, I think, at that point. But uh, yeah, so that's going to be a really interesting, troublesome node, especially with Mephisto. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about, or the next section I want to talk about, is Cosmic Bio. But first, let's take a look at some of the characters. All right, and we're back here with Cosmic Bio. There's some very obvious, clear choices here that you can use for this. If you are a veteran player, then you're most likely running Super Scroll for this. And I think that especially if your cap is D10, you're going to have absolutely no problems doing this. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Uh, other characters that I plan to use is basically this top shelf. For me personally, is going to be Void Knight, Super Scroll, Photon, Phi Lavelle, and Nova. Now, if you don't have Phi Lavelle because you kind of miss the Infinity Watch kind of period, it's a little bit tough, right? Like, <laughs> there's not a lot of good considerations, but obviously, I would try to then at that point probably use Cosmo or a uh, Korg. I think that if you're running the D12 and higher, some of these like higher stack difficulties, you're probably going to want to run Korg and Cosmo anyways. I think that's probably going to be the expectation of running this. And the only problem with that, though, is that, well, if you're a newer player and you are a mid game player and you don't have Nova, well, get fucked because that's probably going to be a big issue. So really, at the end of the day, it's like these top five Cosmo Korg. There's not a lot of wiggle room on this one because Cosmic Bio is just not a really great trait at this point in time, in my opinion. But let's go back to the nodes. Let's take a look. So node number three, which is the start of Cosmic Bio, you're going to be getting characters like uh, Desi. So you get Dark Beast there on the top, uh, Lady Deathstrike, Toad, some Brotherhood characters, I guess, uh, Toad Blob, Silver Samurai weapon. It's, it's a combo of mutant characters, honestly. A lot of this which stems from some synergy with Magneto. So you can see here that Magneto on wave number two with Archangel, Wolverine, Wolverine. So there's like some Weapon X stuff going on. There's some Brotherhood and Death Seed stuff going on here. So at that point in time, you'd probably want to get rid of Dark Beast and Nemesis before Magneto and Archangel drop and then just try to drop them ASAP. I'm not that concerned about the Weapon X characters, I don't think, at this point. And then finally, on wave number three, at the very end, you get an Apocalypse. So that should be fun. But of course, some of these Cosmic Bio characters that you're running are going to get some war buffs, at least namely the Nowhere characters. So for better or for worse, I don't know if does Photon have actually some war buffs? I don't really remember. War offense, yeah, but it might just be for her. It's probably just for her. So there is a little bit of war offense stuff for Photon. Uh, but otherwise, Nova and the Nowhere team are going to get the most amount of benefit from that one. And hopefully that's enough to kill Apocalypse, really. But if you have Super Scroll, probably no problem. If you don't have Super Scroll, I, I think it could be a struggle. And I'm very curious how people are going to run with this. Uh, node number seven. Uh, this one seems a little bit easier. But keep in mind, with the War Buffs active, this is a double-edged sword. So you have Fantastic Four. I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue. Uh, but there is uh, Heroes for Hire, <laughs> which means that Heroes for Hire is very likely going to spawn with their charges, which basically uh, it heals them up, it cleanses them and all that, and you have to kill them multiple times, more or less, unless you put a trauma and a heal block on them, which we might be able to do with Super Scroll. But I have a feeling that it could just outright kill them. Uh, Nova can also do this with this special, I believe, with the War Buffs active. So this is probably what you'll have to look out for. Characters like Misty Knight and Shang-Chi on turn on wave one. Then we have Invisible Woman, more Heroes for Hire, Luke Cage, Colleen Wing, and then another Iron Fist, Shang-Chi, Iron Fist on wave number three. So it's basically just going to be chopping through the Heroes for Hire. I don't think that the part with the Fantastic Four is really going to be that big of an issue. And that is Cosmic Bio. Moving on to the next section, which is Hero Skill on nodes four and eight. So let's take a look at those characters there. Really, at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot of Spider Society because that's the most recent characters that are hero skill. They're all hero skill. So you can see on the top shelf, this is my Spider Society characters. It does also include Black Knight. However, um, there's a Cabal set or there's an out of time section. I, I don't know if you're going to want to use them standalone in here necessarily. 
I think I'd probably just go with the Synergy where possible. There's also Kestrel, but outside of Spider Society, you're using like a weird hodgepodge of mixture characters, kind of like the, the, the new Avengers. We got Ronin and we got Mockingbird. You got Nick Fury still available. So you could do like a weird shield kind of hero skill team with Kestrel, Kestrel, Nick Fury, Ronin, Mockingbird, Gamora, Gamora and Moondragon even, uh, Black Widow. You know, there's some characters here. They're not very friendly for mid-game players, and I think a lot of people are going to crutch on Spider Society, and then if you need to, possibly include Kestrel in there as well. But let's take a look at some of the enemies in here. So, node number four is entirely Sinister Six. you got the whole cast, pretty much, of the Sinister Six. I think everyone is there, except for Shocker, because Doc Ock is going to summon them. So, we got Shocker, or we got Doc Ock and Shocker, we got Craven, Lizard, Lizard, Rhino, Spider Slayer, Spider Slayer, Green Goblin, Regular... Vulture and Green Goblin Classic, Craven and Mysterio. I'm pretty sure that's everyone. So in terms of kill order, I don't know. Probably Doc Ock. I don't like Craven either. They're also going to have Crucible buffs, so that's going to be fun, right? So, <laughs> uh, and the other thing is that Lizard gets speed bar bonuses when you're going up against uh, hero Spider-Verse characters. Pretty sure things like that or any Spider-Verse characters. So if you're running Spider Society, which most likely you will, you're kind of already getting a negative hit, I guess, in this node. So this can be kind of fun or not fun. I think that node number eight might be a little bit easier, but this is actually a pretty big concern as well. So I think the hero skill section is going to be very hard in this trial. You have Absorbing Man. You basically have Masters of Evil and Gamma. You have Absorbing Man, two Abominations, Moonstone, uh, three, uh, two Absorbing Man, sorry, two Abominations, Moonstone, Titanium, and Brawn. Then you have two Hulks, She-Hulk, she-Hulk's got to go ASAP, otherwise she's going to chuck stuff back. Um, and then when you get to the final wave, it's Red Hulk and Kang. <laughs> now, with the War and Crucible buffs, this is going to be really nasty. Uh, Red Hulk's going to be really, really awful. You're going to want to, like, stun him and ability block him ASAP when you can, hopefully. Uh, because, well, uh, you know, Red Hulk's going to get a shit ton of charges very fast with the War buffs. Uh, so this should be fun. And by fun, I think this is going to be the worst section. So that's hero skill. And then we have one final section, the villain section. I think at this point is probably going to be easier, in my opinion, especially with the characters that you're going to have at your disposal. Uh, very likely, you're probably going to double dip with Super Scroll. He's probably going to be healthy, uh, but that's just my assumptions. You're also going to have three of the hive mind characters you could use. You could use your own Kang. You can use, aka your own Masters of Evil, because they're all villains anyways. You have Morgan Le Fay, you have Super Scroll and Apoc. You're probably absolutely going to be running Apoc because, well, uh, you know, there's no other place to really use them outside of node number one. You also have your Sinister Six. So you have a pretty strong team there that's going to have Crucible buffs, and I think that's, you could have multiple teams at this point. Honestly, you could have like a hive mind mixture with Apoc and Scroll and Kang. You can run the entire Sinister Six which is going to be really good because not only are you getting war bonuses, but you're also getting the crucible bonuses. So they're going to get a lot of buffs there. Uh, there is Dormammu. I'm, I, I don't think I really need to tell you how to do this. Death Seed is a potential as well for veteran players. So there's probably at least two or three good teams that you can use for this section. Now, I wouldn't recommend using Cabal because you're going to want to save that for node number 10. But you also could do that if you really wanted to. If, you're, if, you're, if your Cabal is really big and you want to do that, you know, and maybe that could be a good idea for some of this, that you could run Cabal with Kang and Titania or Kang and Apocalypse or Kang and Skrull or whatever, right? You know, there's, there's some good options here because of the Crucible buffs. Now, the nodes themselves, though, we're taking a look at basically Nowhere and um, some Extreme X-Men, actually. So you have at the top Cosmo, Korg. Actually, I believe it's two Cosmos and two Korgs. Cosmo, Korg, and then Korg down here. And then another Cosmo. So two of them both. And then you have Star-Lord Annihilation. So you're already having like five Nowhere characters with Dazzler, two Dazzlers, and a Colossus. So Colossus, Colossus will attempt to tank. Korg will obviously attempt to tank as well. And then on wave number two, you have Thor, Infinity War, more Nowhere, Gambit, Nightcrawler, and Forge. Those are the worst three of the extreme X-Men. So I think making sure that you kill Forge and Nightcrawler ASAP is going to be pretty important. Although the pings from Gambit could be quite painful depending on what characters you're using. And then finally at the very end, it's not the Cyclops. I don't really care about the Cyclops. It's the Nova. Nova obviously stacked with more Nowhere characters with war buffs is not going to be fun. No bueno there. So this one could be challenging as well, but you have a lot of different characters to choose from, which makes me believe that it's not going to be that hard. 
Node number nine, which is the final section of the villains area. This one seems, in my opinion, seems kind of easy, but that's just at first glance here. You're looking at basically A-Force and Young Avengers. So yes, they are going to get their war buffs. That kind of sucks, um, but they're fairly old as far as the meta goes. So I would imagine if you're running Sinister Six or even Hive Mind, maybe at this point, would probably be able to chew them up pretty well. You do have uh, Captain Marvel, two Photons, Spider-Woman, Echo, Kate Bishop, and a Miss Marvel Normal, part of Young Avengers. And then you have Nico, Jessica Jones, Viv, which isn't actually part of any of those, really. But she can flip negative status effects, I believe, on her alt still outside of Bionic Avengers. And then you have Miles, America Chavez, Miss Marvel, right normal again, part of Young Avengers. And then Captain Marvel, Spider-Woman, Squirrel Girl, and Kate Bishop. So a lot of characters, though. There's a lot of enemies. But they're, they're pretty old as far as the meta goes. So I don't think this will be that challenging. you got a lot of villain characters to choose from especially some potentially really big ones where this could be a problem is if you know you're a mid gamer and you're kind of get trying to get through this with you know less ideal characters that could be a little bit of a challenge but if you're running you know characters like super scroll because this is node number nine at this point so if your scroll is still alive then i'd recommend using them at that point and then you have apocalypse you have some hive mind characters you have masters of evil you have morgan you have sinister six you have black cat you know there's a lot of characters that you can choose from I don't think it's going to be that difficult. I think where, and I, I, I want to say right off the bat, this is not designed to be an easy event by any means. You can see by the characters that are included in this, that this is going to be very challenging for, honestly, anyone that's like less than nine months into the game, I think. I am not doing this on my baby account. I am probably skipping this. I, I might try and like rank somewhere, but I'm, I don't think I'm going to get very far. This is definitely a higher tier, higher bar legendary event, and you can see it in the nodes. You can see it in the enemies. You can see it in uh, what characters that they're wanting you to use. This cosmic bio section is very restricted as well, where I'm a little bit concerned that maybe you're going to need con you're going to need super scroll. And if you don't, I think it's going to be incredibly challenging. But uh, we'll wait and see as people start complaining about this on Friday. I just want to give you guys all a little bit of a heads up of what's to come and what I'm planning and the characters that I'll be using for this. And that's going to be the end of the video, everyone. And of course, until next time, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you all later. Good luck on Friday with Old Man Logan. Also, make sure to get it in ASAP because of the leaderboard and potential ties. Uh, because I think that's how it's going to work. Otherwise, if something changes, I'll let people know on my Discord server. Uh, so that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next video.